it's wonderful to be able to welcome back Paul K. Joyce to the podcast. Hello, Paul. Hello, Kevin. And Mark. Yes, and Mark. Yes, Why yes. Not? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, both. So, Paul, it was great to have you back, as we just said earlier. But a question for you. Now that you've had yeah. a chance to reflect on the quest, what do you think of it and your contribution to it? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, a, a, as, as an, an artist, it's always a delight to be affiliated to a band that you've long admired. Mm. So that was, you know, a big plus. Musically, uh, I think Minus the Man was my favourite my favorite track. Mm -hmm. um, I think because of its, uh, you know, sci-fi edge, which I, which I quite like, and uh, pulling you towards this new album, of course, Cut From The Stars, with its international dark sky park lyric, and uh, which I really enjoy. We've got you back on here, Paul, obviously, because you were asked to work on another album, a second album. When did you know that the band wanted you to work on, on some more orchestrations for them? Steve Howe contacted me in late 2021, saying that um, there was the possibility of a, a second album. And uh, to my surprise and delight, he uh, said, would I like to you know, contribute some orchestrations? Mm. So I looked at my schedule and <laughs> said, uh, yeah, OK. <laughs> and uh, there we were. The, the, the ball was rolling. So were there any differences in what they asked for this time or was it more of the same? Well, it wasn't more of the same, really. It, it, it was more of the same in the sense that in the title track, Mirror to the Sky, uh, there's this section which features orchestra unaccompanied by the band, you know, similarly uh, in the quest. However, this time in that title track, Mirror to the Sky, there's this extended instrumental section prior to this solo orchestral bit where unintentionally, now Steve Howe, I've known since 2012, and they say never meet your heroes, but <laughs> I've got to say it's an exception in Steve's case because he, A, yeah, obviously he's a very talented guitarist, but uh, he happens to be a very, uh, he's very keen on collaborative um, efforts. So when he invites me to come on, it's not in this um, spirit of, I have an idea in my head, I want you to do what I say. It's he's, right. He wants me to bring what I have to the table. Yeah. So it was, here's the track, go away and come back with something that's going to, you know, amaze and inspire me. Uh -huh. And um, I did. Well, I, I went away <laughs> and uh, I came back. And I, I absolutely, I, I really, particularly this title track, The Mirrors of the Sky, I, I really got it. And I think Steve... And the band have created these, for me, these, they feel very American, the landscapes the, of, the, right. you know, of, of desert and, yeah, and, and wide open spaces. Um, that's how I, huh. so when I was writing it, it, it felt like I was in the middle of this huge space and uh, I was Ennio Morricone. And <laughs> yes. the, the band was saying, you know, come on, Ennio, what have you got to uh, contribute to this? So uh, it feels to me like these are, I really got into these strings changing in pitch and chords where the, the strings just moved from morphed into the next chord. It was it, I just listened to it before I, I chatting to you mm. and uh, I just think it's wonderful. It's interesting you, when you mention that it reminds me of like Arizona or the Nevada desert, exactly. like that kind of imagery. Exactly. Mm. That, that's where every time I listen to it, I, I'm, I'm there. There's this uh, rim shot on the drums and, and a repetitive bass and this lots of space. I think in the modern era where we have Pro Tools and 48, 64 tracks, there's no limit to what you can add to a track. Yeah. The, the, the difficulty or, or the trick I think is to have less yes. have great great sounds but and fewer great sounds mm. so that you get the economy perhaps that you, you'd have in a, I don't know for example as a, an early Beatles track where you, you you had hardly any tracks to work with so you made everything yeah. count exactly mm -hmm. so quickly I had to ask about that whole imagery thing um, have you been to these places that we discussed like Nevada and Arizona have you actually been there like do you refer back to these imagery in in your head like if you've been there before well the first time I went I, I'll answer to you, your question obliquely the first time I went to New York and the taxi took us closer to Manhattan it was as if I had been there all my life and this was just mm. a return trip 
you know, all the imagery through film and TV made it so familiar. And having watched Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul, I feel as if I know <laughs> New Mexico and Arizona and all those <laughs> desert wastelands so well. Yeah. But the answer is no, I haven't been there, but th th I'm just so familiar with uh, how it must feel to be there. Through the magic of television. Mm. Yes. Mm. Okay, well, we'll come back to some of the other songs and so on in a moment, but it, it always seems odd to, to us, I think, but... I think you said last time we spoke that you don't actually get to hear the albums as a whole before they're released. Is that right? This time I did, because I ah, sat down right. with Steve and um, he, he said, OK, let's go through the whole album and see what you think where orchestra or strings or, or any form of orchestral accompany, could, accompaniment could work with the, the tracks as they stand. Mm. So I did that, and I think it was about 50% where I thought you could, I could make a, a meaningful contribution because I, I've, got, I've got this real thing about orchestras and rock bands that generally they don't go very well together. Mm. Um, they can end up sounding... The orchestra's too big, it sounds too... I mean, I, you know, I say this and you're thinking, or so people listening to this podcast may be thinking, well, he's clearly <laughs> failed. But I tried my best to make it so that the, the band, that the orchestral band, absolutely complement yes. Mm. And don't in any way try to replicate what the band do. It, it's got to be else and something that's, you know, circles of time that the, the, the ballad on the, the album was the most difficult one because i said to steve it can benefit from strings but it, they have to be so careful mm. and so delicate that almost uh, that you don't notice them really um, right you right. notice if they weren't there so what did you think of the songs you worked on similar to the quest or rather different i thought they were different the the, the stand back <laughs> standout track uh which one do you pick but um cut from the stars mm. i just i loved it i love it it's edginess it's it's unpredictable quality and it's it's not like a yes track i've ever heard before no and it's thematically it just felt very lively and i think that the balance that yes have to tread is that they obviously that you know this is 2023 or 2022 when the album was made you want to acknowledge the present and but there's a huge legacy of material mm. that equally you sort of want to pull into the uh into the frame without appearing that you're pastiching yourself mm. um yeah so it's a it's a you know, with, without alienating your your fans, you want to please them, but pull them into new territory, and, and that's why I think this album works uh, works so well. That's fascinating to hear because that's the one question that us fans always have, of course, when you hear the the first single that's supposed to draw you towards the the rest of the album, as it were. Sometimes mm -hmm. it does. Sometimes it's it feels very different from the rest of the of the record. So. Two, two questions about that. Do you think it does hang together as a, a record? And uh, secondly, do you think it's, a, you know, as you've just been saying, a proper Yes album? Does it sound like a Yes album? Yes, it does. I think because it's got heart, and you can hear the, the heart particularly in that getting back to that thing of where, where voices and instruments are exposed and, you know, there, isn't, there aren't layers of overdubs to give this uh, big sound. Circles of time, you know, where... Uh, John Davidson's voice is, you know, very much out there, and you can hear the the sentiment and feeling behind the song. So uh, yes, I, th I think if there's again, it's the it's the problem with technology that you know bands used to go into studios and they'd perform their tracks and they'd do a few overdubs, but that was pretty much it. But mm -hmm. with the advent of multi tracking and and endless digital uh, possibilities, you can iron out all those what appear like creases in the uh, music that actually are, you know, it's personality mm. and there are little mistakes you can hear not i won't call them mistakes but idiosyncrasies in in earlier yes tracks where the performances aren't necessarily perfect but they have a it's feel yeah uh, and if you if you dare to allow early earlier versions of uh, takes perhaps to get through to uh, people who eventually listen to them hmm. uh, you know, in the days and these modern days where, you know, you don't hear out of tune vocals because everything is yeah. is auto tuned. Um, and, you know, I'm as guilty as anybody else. You know, I don't want to hear my voice with its, 
shall we say, <laughs> idiosyncrasies when I really mean imperfections, uh, because yeah. autotune, you know, just makes it all, oh, oh, yeah, that's it, makes me sound like a proper singer. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so th there is heart in this album, I, I think, very much so. And the other part of my question, Cut From The Stars, does that give us a good clue as to the feel of the rest of the album? Yes and no. I think it gives... <laughs> um, I should have been a politician, really, shouldn't I? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, in the sense that it, it shows a desire to break away from formulaic music making and and do something that, you know, even down to Steve's guitar sounds, I, I, I can't remember that he's gone for a particular sound like that on no. his guitar it, it, it sounds you know fresh f for for the band yeah um and no in the sense that there are a lot of different that there are different styles there but but the, the thing that binds them all of course is you know steve's steel guitar um right you know those soaring i think for me when i think of the quintessential moments of yes you know in, and you and I and soon, you know, it's it's that it's where Steve just takes the the melody and and pushes it to to the limit, uh, mm. you know, in those high uh, the high range of his uh, steel guitar. Right. So before I before I, let me preface this question by saying that due to the advancements of technology for like keyboards and for instruments in general, do, mm. don't take this question the wrong way as a sort of like, a, oh, I can't believe they didn't know the difference. When I ask you this, uh, the opening to Cut From The Stars seems to have some strings at the beginning of it. Now, was that your recording or is that actually a synthesized orchestra? Mark, I can't believe you can't tell. <laughs> <laughs> Shocked of England here. Um, it's real strings. It's the okay. famous uh, studio orchestra from North Macedonia, Skopje, North Macedonia. Yes, and it was a a part of the uh, part of the track that comes later, which they've decided to feature a, a, as the as the uh, opening to the track. Yes, yes. So yeah. Hence, it's got that, it's got a, a liveliness to it that, uh, so yes, they're, they're real strings. That's brilliant. Okay. So uh, you've already said that it's the famous orchestra again, like it was on the quest. Yes. And Wikipedia, I see, just before coming on to speak to you, tells us that the conductor was somebody called Oleg Kondratenko. Correct. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. <laughs> so um, I wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so... You, you mentioned last time that, that you worked at a distance with the Fames Orchestra. Is that the, the same this time? Exactly, yes. Yeah. So I'm here in uh, Devon, in the southwest of the United Kingdom. And uh, Fames, of course, are in uh, just quite quite close to uh, Greece. Right. And you, you, you contact them via Zoom or whatever, is, is that how you do it? Yeah, they, they send a, a bit like the link we're using uh, to, so that I can hear the, the audio at high quality. Mm. And then I have a direct link to the conductor. So we're in constant uh, communication. Yeah. But I must say that such is the professionalism and competence of, the, of both conductor and orchestra that and 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 my part is to make the score yeah. you know, the music that they read is so unequivocal that it's so clear and so correct they put it on their sheets they mm. play it and the the conductor knows exactly what I want to achieve with it um so each session has been I mean, it's nerve wracking. I have to be honest doing it because you worry that you've overlooked something it's just it's, but I yeah. haven't <laughs> so, so far. <laughs> so it is great. But we did two sessions, one on April the 29th in 2022. Yeah. And that was for a 52-piece orchestra. Wow. So 12 first violins, 10 second violins, eight violas, wow. six cellos, four double bass, two flutes, a bassoon, six uh, horns, two trumpets, oh, tuba, horns. Two percussion. Oh, you've got to have those horns. Oh, yeah. The, hor <laughs> the horns you hear, and it's only on the one track, Mirror to the Sky. No other track uses these forces. Right. Um, because the rest of the album didn't need a, a full orchestra. Just I'll come on to the, the, the other tracks. So, and, and again, having those forces at your disposal, it really, they were all swells and push and pull and uh, backing up what uh, the band the band did mm. and so then we had a second session on may the 11th right and that was purely a, a string se session so 12 first violins 10 second violins eight violas so 30 players 
Mm. And um, so you can particularly hear the violas in the in the um, in the strings because wow. I, I I do like a nice viola. Yeah, they, they sort of have a, a, a deeper, richer yes. sound. Even though, um, sorry, viola players, if you're listening, but they're sort they are sort of viewed as the poor. Yes, they are <laughs> the poor man or woman of the uh, of the orchestra. Which is I don't very unfair. It no, is no, unfair. No, no. It's a... It is unfair because they make <laughs> yeah. a wonderful sound. So so yes, the remainder of the tracks to which I contributed, it's that second session that with the, with the fewer forces, right? Exactly. Yeah. So, I, so I got to ask this. I mean, this, this is two two questions actually. I'm imagining that there might be longer orchestral pieces, like on magnification, throughout this album. And the other thing is, did you maybe think about bringing cannons in for the orchestra, a la eighteen twelve? <laughs> bringing what in? Sorry, cannons. Cannons. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Mark, you need to change your medication, I think. Really. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, the, well, the, in fact, I listened to Magnification uh, the other day just to see, uh, remind myself how that album panned out. Of course, it, I didn't realise it. It was, it was quite a few years ago now, 20 odd years well, ago. 2001, yeah. I think, yeah. Yeah, yeah and, the, and the last album that uh, John Anderson sang on. Yeah. They, the, the orchestra was completely enmeshed with the band on yes. on that album and a very different album. I mean, obviously a skilled orchestrator. I do, I, I actually do like the album. Yes. You can hear the quintessential, how can I put it, the friction that exists between John Anderson and the rest of the band, his highly melodic writing mm. and the band's desire to, the rest of the band's desire to, you know, to, to rock and uh, yeah, but when it works and you've got they have a, a great melody to work with, you can hear then their ability to arrange it and their enthusiasm for the sort of the exposition of that that main theme, and their backing vocals. I, I you know I've always liked uh, their backing vocals. So it's a shame, shame that uh, Chris Squire isn't around to still yes. contribute. Yes, that's right. So tell us a bit more about the other the other tracks that you worked on then. Well, there aren't that many, to be honest. Okay. Uh, perhaps you want to slam the phone down now. I don't know. But, uh, <laughs> Not at all, no. For goodness sake. <laughs> okay, so, well, uh, obviously All Connected is, is the single with these uh, jerky bits of string contribution. And the, the, the two tracks, Living Out the Dream uh, and Luminosity. Oh, yes, yes. Essentially, uh, the strings there... A double up and uh, underpin Steve's, you know, soaring um, steel guitar. That's what they do on both those, right. purely in the in the end sections. Okay. Mirror to the sky. It's a different story. <laughs> mm. I'm all over the shop. <laughs> yes. Again, ju- judicious and careful, uh, not overplaying my hand. There's just some lovely uh, play when the mirror to the sky theme first comes in and. There's an interplay between the violins and John's voice, uh, which I found very pleasing. I hope, I mm. hope uh, it's received as mm. well. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, that there's that this middle section where the yes. the orchestra there's this repeated acoustic guitar riff that uh, doubles up with cellos and it builds and builds and builds and builds and builds and then comes right down to the moment I described earlier. Mm. So yeah, very satisfying track. Uh, Circles of time, then uh, these. I'm going to exquisitely sensitive strings. <laughs> mm. Yeah, but I yeah. would say that, wouldn't I? Really. Yeah. Uh, but <laughs> that was my intention to make them so delicate, and the players got it just right. I felt. Yeah. So, there, as you know, obviously there are three songs on the bonus disc. And uh, I'm not sure if you have anything to do with any of those songs, but I am curious about one thing. But I'm curious about one thing. When when there is no orchestra, is that usually Steve saying we don't need it? Or have you ever stepped in and said, I don't think we should put strings on this? Well, again, I go back to Steve being this most amazing person to work with. I just said they don't need strings on this mm. track. And he said, OK. Right. And that, that oh, was good. pretty pretty much it again i went back and listened to the album at the time yeah and uh that was a much more drawn out period of time of of exploring what might work trying this editing this and i think we came to, well obviously i i felt i understood where he was musically but he came to tr- trust me i think really yeah. so i think that that's what this is a you know it's a big thing when you're in this 
part of your career and you know a new album is about to come out and the, mm. there's this whole legacy <laughs> all these albums stacked behind you leading to this moment and you know there are people out there think oh that what are they making an album for they they're, they're mm. past it you know mm. what the heck are they doing but you can hear i i can hear in this this album there's a lot of music to be made and mm -hmm. uh, S Stephen uh, the band's show no signs of wanting yeah. to <clears throat> or diminish their output so what else are you working on at the moment i've just finished uh, the soundtrack to uh, a short film called landmine and uh, i've just that's just been released which i'm very pleased with and again uh, it, it's strange that similarity between the yes thing and this that my desire somehow i've got i just want string players to bend the notes mm -hmm. and i do exactly that with with this uh, album landmine where all the cellos are going mad bending up and down because it's a it's a quite a dark subject matter uh, yeah. about a a young man returning from bergen belsen in 1945 to his family home in uh, in Poland mm -hmm. and I'm sort of getting ready to do a, an album of uh, songs again with orchestra and band yeah that's I think that's, that's enough to be going on with absolutely it is yes yeah. <laughs> well I do have a, a bit of a personal question for you okay and that is that my daughter is doing a, a college course on music performance and production yes uh, so she's keen on a career in the music industry what would be your advice for her as she starts out on this path that you've trod. And she's a, she, she writes great music herself. Yes, she, yes, she does. She wants to, to, to write music for movies or, or uh, computer games, those sorts of things. Yes. But she's, she's also interested in being, you know, a, an artist herself, a, a singer and a composer. Yeah, because artists, musicians, creatives are fragile people, uh, I don't mean that flippantly, in the sense that in order to to create and be truly the creator that you are, you need to be in a good place. Mm. You need to be motivated. You need to feel confident about your craft so that, you know, when you have an idea, you think, yes, that's a good one. And the problem with making it in the commercial world yeah. is failure and rejection. That's mm. the big, outside of, you know, having a good idea, which is obviously paramount, but you can have a good idea and you can present that amazing idea to a group of people, perhaps the wrong people, and they can say, no, that's not a good idea. Mm. So what do you do? And it's the picking yourself up and a truly understanding how you feel about when someone rejects you or you know knocks you back. If you feel actually once you've calmed down, that you mm. reject their uh, assessment, yeah. that then you've, you've achieved something because you've, you haven't been put off or deterred from your, your chosen path. But you have to be careful about who you submit your work to. And I would say for your daughter, uh, find an advocate, someone who mm. in the industry who will cha help you champion without taking over your life, but help you champion uh, your work. Mm. Uh, it could be a publisher. Publishers are often a good uh, start, but these days publishers, they don't want aspiring artists. They want artists with, you know, 10,000 followers <laughs> on Instagram or their YouTube yes. account. They, everything has, um, I'm not, that's not everybody, but it, it's, a, <laughs> yeah. it's a, a bit of a, a fashion really yes and be resolute in your pursuit of your your craft really if she's presenting stuff uh, music to people make sure it's the best realization of that so that if for instance she's playing music to somebody she's not feeling the need to say oh this is only a demo oh, yes yes uh, i i couldn't get the person i wanted to perform this yeah um because people do want to hear as near as possible sort of finished masters, not not demos. Yeah, yeah. That said, and luck plays a big part in it, but you make your luck by knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. And I would just say, keep knocking on doors. And even when people, you know, reject you, you just got to think, oh, no, no. You take on board what people say. You do. You, you can't help it. But you have to have that unquenchable 
uh, belief in your own ability. Mm-hmm. You know, one thing that I have to agree with Paul is the whole thing about the finding somebody in the industry. One thing that I noticed when in myself doing this is that the biggest thing that I benefited from was making as many contacts as possible yeah. in the mm-hmm. industry. Because one mm-hmm. thing I noticed was somebody that you become friends with within the industry who might be like, you know, a junior assistant or something in time, these people sometimes move up to being like vice president That's or something right. like this. And next thing you know, this person who had little impact on your career could suddenly have a gigantic impact mm-hmm. on them. You know, yeah. so I think staying in contact with people, making as many people like friend uh, friend up with as many people within the industry as you can, is an immense uh, of, of immense importance. I think I think Paul would agree with that. Yeah, mm. yeah. yeah. I mean, certainly my break. I, I can tell you very quickly. My break came because I've been pestering this uh, publisher in London, <laughs> and eventually he said, "Oh, for goodness' sake! Look, there's a guy in Leeds, uh, in the north of England." <laughs> do a gig there. He'll give you a gig. So yeah. he sort of got rid of me. We did, we were doing the gig, <laughs> but at the gig was the keyboard player from Soft Cell. Right. Ah. Yeah. So yeah. he, he rang me up when I got home that yeah. morning at three o'clock in the morning and said, I want to produce you. Ah, yes. And that was it. <laughs> everything, everything changed. And I was sort of on my way. Yes. And that's, that's how it starts. So I yeah. I'd sort of made my luck by, you know, by knocking on doors and making a bit of a, a nuisance of myself. But, mm. um, and I'm sure that's that, that a lot of that reminds me of, of some of the things that happened in the late 60s, early 70s in London with yeah. bands like Yes, uh, knocking on people's doors and getting themselves known and, and getting out there and meeting people and, and being yeah. part of that whole scene. And those serendipitous sort of connections where someone says, oh, yeah, I was chatting to this guy yesterday and he's in a band and, and they're looking for and you want and suddenly yeah. there's a, <laughs> yeah. you know, this. But you have to be in someone's headspace to yes. to make those connections. And, and, and yes. your daughter could just have sent in uh, an MP3 to somebody yes. who was looking for. Well, I didn't like it, but you might like it. Yeah. And, you know, that sort of a coincidental introduction. Fabulous. Well, good luck to her. If, yes, I mean, thank you. if if I can help, I'd be very happy to. Um, That'd be great uh, if she wants. You know, for yeah, what? For yeah, absolutely, fantastic stuff. Well, listen, it's been absolutely brilliant speaking to you again, Paul, and I think you've really whetted our appetite for this yes. New Year's album, and we don't have that long to wait to to hear your work on it and the whole album. So, thank you very, very much indeed, Paul. Well, you're very welcome. It's always a pleasure. Mm-hmm. 